Merry Christmas. Uh, we're taking a moment to think about the glad tidings and the peace on earth and goodwill towards one another. And out of goodwill towards you, I want you to know that there are no services on December 26th. You would not experience peace on earth if you showed up for services that don't exist. But do join us on January 2nd for Vision Weekend, where Charlie's gonna talk about five teams that have one dream. And this is the synergy of Players Box, Reverie, City Lights, and Campus Gatherings and Personal Care, and how all of them together give us this holistic approach to serving and loving our community as the Church of Jesus. And then in January 9th, we will begin our relationship series called Marriage is a Numbers Game. And it doesn't take very long for you or for me, anyone, to participate in a relationship before they experience some compatibility challenges. And so this service, it, uh, this series, is where we'll take the Enneagram series that we've done in the past, which is personality types, and we'll leverage those uh, and all of that information to understand how we can maximize compatibility in our relationships. There's an old problem that needs new solutions, and relationships are one of those, but also facing uh, students is this old problem uh, and this crisis that manifests in new ways. And so Southbrook has taken this extraordinary step towards students in our community through the initiative of Players Box. And we have faithfully, you have faithfully, pledged three and a half million towards this effort. And there's another half of a million that we have yet to commit and raise. And there's an invitation in that for you to be an active participant with us uh, as a new solution to this problem. This, this problem and the crisis that, that faces students has existed for a long time. Uh, Charlie Brown and his 1965 cartoon is a, is a good example of how crisis surrounds students. And I wanna to talk to you a little bit about Charlie Brown this Christmas. And that's either because I'm nostalgic or I'm immature enough to still enjoy cartoons as a 32 year old man. Uh, but in my family, in this tradition, we watch Linus before we open any gifts. We watch Linus recite Luke 2. And so we've done this every Christmas and Christmas after Christmas, I've still missed this really subtle, yet very significant event that happens while Linus is reciting Luke 2. Uh, until a week ago, uh, my friend Julie told me about how Charlie Brown has this famous yellow striped shirt. And we all know that Linus has his famous old blanket. And throughout the story, Peanuts, Lucy, Snoopy, Sally, they all attempt to help Linus remove his blanket that he doesn't need anymore. And this otherwise thoughtful and mature character won't give it up despite the ridicule until this moment where Linus drops his ever comforting blanket while reciting the angel's words, do not fear. Charles Schultz, the screenwriter, was reminding us of three different things. First, the birth of Jesus separates us from our fears. Second, the birth of Jesus frees us from the habits that we are unable to break ourselves. And then third, the birth of Jesus allows us to simply drop the false security that we've been grasping so tightly. So in the midst of fear and insecurity, this simple cartoon from over 50 years ago continues to live on as an inspiration for us as we seek true peace. And you'll see Linus at the end of the scene pick his blanket back up which begs the question, why? It feels so anticlimactic that this thing, this, all, this burden that Linus has been unnecessarily carrying for this whole time, uh, he drops, but then only to pick it back up. But this is not where the story ends. The show ends with the peanut gang singing, but they aren't singing the predictable oh, Christmas tree melody that is playing in behind them because the focus is no longer on the tree. The, the focus is on something bigger, what the tree stands for. The focus is on Jesus. So you've got the whole gang singing out, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Because the tree is a symbol of God's light and generosity, 
So to my, to my left here is this tree uh, where these little lights are hovering inside of the dark branches of the tree, which is a reminder for me and for you that God will not leave you in your darkness. And then the place that we put our gifts as we exchange them with each other are under the lowest branches of the tree where the tree performs its duty as a canopy, showing sanctuary to this God-inspired expression of generosity and how, just how important it is to preserve the spirit of giving to one another. And just like Linus, we have all gone to great efforts to carry our insecurities, our sin and our lies and our hurts with us for so long. Some of us, uh, even once we've put them down, we pick them back up. So when you are finally willing to part with your insecurity, be like Linus and don't just leave it anywhere. He was very intentional about the place he would leave it. He would want to leave it in a place that he was never going to look back. And as an exercise for your family, and maybe this is a new tradition, I want you to take some leftover wrapping paper what I want you to do is sit either by yourself or with your family and look at this shredded, undesirable wrapping that once concealed something good, but now conceals nothing and it sits as trash. And I want you to imagine how it could represent whatever your fear, your insecurity, or your sin could be, anything that limits you from right relationship, righteousness with one another, God, or family or friends, or enemies. And I want you to say out loud what that is and then place the wrapping paper under the tree. See, for most of us, the Christmas tree is a reminder of Christ, but then it mostly performs as a conduit or a, uh, a, a place that we put gifts only to redistribute them to one another, which is a really good thing. But we don't often think about the Christmas tree as something where we also exchange something with God through Christ. See, the tree is a symbol that foreshadows this, a tree that Jesus, 33 years after his birth, will provide an opportunity for this great exchange of our sin and our brokenness for His grace. And it's an opportunity for you and I, just like Linus, with this intentionality to take our insecurity and our fear and our blankets and to say, because of the hope given to me through the person of Jesus on a cross 2,000 years ago, I can give this up and it's His. Merry Christmas.